Godzilla. Godzilla is depicted as an enormous, destructive, prehistoric sea monster awakened and empowered by nuclear radiation. With the nuclear bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the Lucky Dragon 5 incident still fresh in the Japanese consciousness, Godzilla was conceived as a metaphor for nuclear weapons. As the film series expanded, some stories took on less serious undertones, portraying Godzilla as an anti hero, or a lesser threat who defends humanity. With the end of the Cold War, several post 1984 Godzilla films shifted the character's portrayal to themes including Japan's forgetfulness over its imperial past, natural disasters, and the human condition. Godzilla has been featured alongside many supporting characters. It has faced human opponents such as the JSDF, or other monsters, including King Ghidorah, Gigan, and Mechagodzilla. Godzilla sometimes has allies, such as Mothra, Rodan, and Anguirus, and offspring, such as Manila and Godzilla Jr. Godzilla has also fought characters from other franchises in crossover media, such as RKO Pictures slash Universal Studios movie Monster King Kong and American comic books publisher Marvel Comics characters Shield, The Fantastic Four and The Avengers is a portmanteau of the Japanese words, and, which is fitting because in one planning stage, Godzilla was described as a cross between a gorilla and a whale, alluding to its size, power and aquatic origin. One popular story is that Gojira was actually the nickname of a corpulent stagehand at Toho Studio. Kimi Honda, the widow of the director, dismissed this in a 1998 BBC documentary devoted to Godzilla, the backstage boys at Toho love to joke around with tall stories. Godzilla's name was written in AT edgy as, where the kanji are used for phonetic value and not for meaning. The Japanese pronunciation of the name is, the anglicized form is, with the first syllable pronounced like the word God, and the rest rhyming with gorilla. In the Hepburn romanization system, Godzilla's name is rendered as Gojira, whereas in the Kunrei romanization system it is rendered as Gozira. During the development of the American version of Godzilla Raids Again, 1955, Godzilla's name was changed to Gigantus, a move initiated by producer Paul Schreibman, who wanted to create a character distinct from Godzilla. Within the context of the Japanese films, Godzilla's exact origins vary, but it is generally depicted as an enormous, violent, prehistoric sea monster awakened and empowered by nuclear radiation. Although the specific details of Godzilla's appearance have varied slightly over the years, the overall impression has remained consistent. Inspired by the fictional Redosaurus created by animator Ray Harryhausen for the film The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, Godzilla's iconic character design was conceived as that of an amphibious reptilian monster based around the loose concept of a dinosaur with an erect standing posture, scaly skin, an anthropomorphic torso with muscular arms, spikes on its back and tail, and a furrowed brow. Art director Akira Watanabe combined attributes of a Tyrannosaurus and a Guanodon a stegosaurus and an alligator to form a sort of blended chimera, inspired by illustrations from an issue of Life magazine. To emphasize the monster's relationship with the atomic bomb, its skin texture was inspired by the colloid scars seen on survivors in Hiroshima. The basic design has a reptilian visage, a robust build, an upright posture, a long tail and rows of serrated fins along the back. In the original film, the fins were added for purely aesthetic purposes, in order to further differentiate Godzilla from any other living or extinct creature. Godzilla is sometimes depicted as green in comics, cartoons, and movie posters, but the costumes used in the movies were usually painted charcoal gray with bone white dorsal fins up until the film Godzilla 2000. Godzilla's signature weapon is its atomic breath, a nuclear blast that it generates inside of its body and unleashes from its jaws in the form of a blue or red radioactive heat ray. Toho's special effects department has used various techniques to render the breath, from physical gas-powered flames to hand-drawn or computer-generated fire. Godzilla is shown to possess immense physical strength and muscularity. Haruo Nakajima, the actor who played Godzilla in the original films, was a black belt in judo and used his expertise to choreograph the battle sequences. Godzilla can breathe underwater and is described in the original film by the character Dr. Yamane as a transitional form between a marine and a terrestrial reptile. Godzilla is shown to have great vitality, it is immunato conventional weaponry thanks to its rugged height and ability to regenerate, and as a result of surviving a nuclear explosion, it cannot be destroyed by anything less powerful. Various films, television shows, comics and games have depicted Godzilla with additional powers such as an atomic pulse, magnetism, precognition, 
fireballs, an electric bite, superhuman speed, eye beams and even flight. Godzilla's allegiance and motivations have changed from film to film to suit the needs of the story. Although Godzilla does not like humans, it will fight alongside humanity against common threats. However, it makes no special effort to protect human life or property and will turn against its human allies on a whim. It is not motivated to attack by predatory instinct, it does not eat people, and instead sustains itself on radiation and an omnivorous diet. When inquired if Godzilla was good or bad, producer Shogo Tomiyama likened it to a Shinto god of destruction which lacks moral agency and cannot be held to human standards of good and evil. He totally destroys everything and then there is a rebirth. Something new and fresh can begin. In the original Japanese films, Godzilla and all the other monsters are referred to with gender-neutral pronouns equivalent to it, while in the English-dubbed versions, Godzilla is explicitly described as a male, such as in the title of Godzilla, King of the Monsters. The creature in the 1998 Godzilla film was depicted laying eggs through parthenogenesis. Godzilla has a distinctive disyllabic roar, transcribed in several comics as Scree Young, which was created by composer Akira I. Fukub who produced the sound by rubbing a pine tar resin coated glove along the string of a contrabass and then slowing down the playback. In the American version of Godzilla Raids Again, 1955, entitled Gigantus the Fire Monster, Godzilla's iconic roar was substituted with that of the monster Anguirus. From the return of Godzilla, 1984, to Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, 1991, Godzilla was given a deeper and more threatening sounding roar than in previous films though this change was reverted from Godzilla vs. Mothra, 1992, onwards. For the 2014 American film, sound editors Ethan Van Der Rijn and Eric Odell refused to disclose the source of the sounds used for their Godzilla's roar. Odell described the two syllables of the roar as representing two different emotional reactions, with the first expressing fury, and the second conveying the character's soul. Godzilla's size is inconsistent changing from film to film and even from scene to scene for the sake of artistic license. The miniature sets and costumes were typically built at a scale and filmed at 240 frames per second, to create the illusion of great size. In the original 1954 film, Godzilla was scaled to be tall. This was done so Godzilla could just peer over the largest buildings in Tokyo at the time. In the 1956 American version, Godzilla is estimated to be tall because producer Joseph e. Levine felt that 50 meters did not sound powerful enough. As the series progressed Toho would rescale the character, eventually making Godzilla as tall as. This was so that it would not be dwarfed by the newer bigger buildings in Tokyo's skyline such as the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building which Godzilla destroyed in the film Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, 1991. Supplementary information such as character profiles would also depict Godzilla as weighing between. In the American film Godzilla, 2014, from Legendary Pictures, Godzilla was scaled to be in weighing, making it the largest film version to that time. Director Gareth Edwards wanted Godzilla to be so big as to be seen from anywhere in the city, but not too big that he couldn't be obscured. For Shin Godzilla, 2016, Godzilla was made even taller than the legendary version, at Godzilla's appearance has traditionally been portrayed in the films by an actor wearing a latex costume, though the character has also been rendered in animatronic, stop-motion and computer-generated form. Taking inspiration from King Kong, special effects artist Eiji Tsuburaya had initially wanted Godzilla to be portrayed via stop-motion, but prohibitive deadlines and a lack of experienced animators in Japan at the time made suitmation more practical. The first suit consisted of a body cavity made of thin wires and bamboo wrapped in chicken wire for support, and covered in fabric and cushions, which were then coated in latex. The first suit was held together by small hooks on the back, though subsequent Godzilla suits incorporated a zipper. Its weight was in excess of. Prior to 1984, most Godzilla suits were made from scratch, thus resulting in slight design changes in each film appearance. The most notable changes during the 1960s 70s were the reduction in Godzilla's number of toes and the removal of the character's external ears and prominent fangs, features which would later be reincorporated in the Godzilla designs from the return of Godzilla, 1984, onward. The most consistent Godzilla design was maintained from Godzilla vs. Biollante, 1989, to Godzilla vs. Destroya, 1995 when the suit was given a cat-like face and double rows of teeth. Several suit actors had difficulties in performing as Godzilla, due to the suit's weight, lack of ventilation and diminished visibility. Ken Pachiro Satsuma in particular, 
who portrayed Godzilla from 1984 to 1995, described how the Godzilla suits he wore were even heavier and hotter than their predecessors, because of the incorporation of animatronics. Satsuma himself suffered numerous medical issues during his tenure, including oxygen deprivation, near drowning, concussions, electric shocks, and lacerations to the legs from the suit's steel wire reinforcements wearing through rubber padding. The ventilation problem was partially solved in the suit used in 1994's Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, which was the first to include an air duct, which allowed suit actors to last longer during performances. In The Return of Godzilla, 1984, some scenes made use of a 16-foot-high robotic Godzilla dubbed Cybot Godzilla, for use in close-up shots of the creature's head. The Cybot Godzilla consisted of a hydraulically powered mechanical endoskeleton covered in urethane skin containing 3,000 computer-operated parts which permitted it to tilt its head, and move its lips and arms. In Godzilla, 1998, special effects artist Patrick Tadopoulos was instructed to redesign Godzilla as an incredibly fast runner. At one point, it was planned to use motion capture from a human to create the movements of the computer-generated Godzilla but it ended up looking too much like a human in a suit. Dottopoulos subsequently reimagined the creature as a lean, digitigrade bipedal iguana that stood with its back and tail parallel to the ground, rendered by a CGI. Several scenes had the monster portrayed by stuntmen in suits. The suits were similar to those used in the Toho films, with the actors' heads being located in the monster's neck region, and the facial movements controlled via animatronics. However, because of the creature's horizontal posture, the stuntmen had to wear metal leg extenders, which allowed them to stand off the ground with their feet bent forward. The film's special effects crew also built a scale animatronic Godzilla for close-up scenes, whose size outmatched that of Stan Winston's T-Rex in Jurassic Park. Kurt Carley performed the suitmation sequences for the adult Godzilla. In Godzilla, 2014, the character was portrayed entirely via CGI. Godzilla's design in the reboot was intended to stay true to that of the original series, though the film's special effects team strove to make the monster more dynamic than a guy in a big rubber suit. To create a CG version of Godzilla, the moving picture company, MPC, studied various animals such as bears, Komodo dragons, lizards, lions and wolves which helped the visual effects artists visualize Godzilla's body structure like that of its underlying bone fat and muscle structure as well as the thickness and texture of its scale. Motion capture was also used for some of Godzilla's movements. TJ Storm provided the performance capture for Godzilla by wearing sensors in front of the green screen. In Shin Godzilla, a majority of the character was portrayed via CGI, with Mansai no more portraying Godzilla through motion capture. Godzilla is one of the most recognizable symbols of Japanese popular culture worldwide and remains an important facet of Japanese films, embodying the kaiju subset of the tokusatsu genre. Godzilla's vaguely humanoid appearance and strained, lumbering movements endeared it to Japanese audiences, who could relate to Godzilla as a sympathetic character despite its wrathful nature. Audiences respond positively to the character because it acts out of rage and self-preservation and shows where science and technology can go wrong. In 1967, the Kyukdong Entertainment Company of South Korea, with production assistance from Toye Company, produced Yongari, Monster from the Deep, a reptilian monster who invades South Korea to consume oil. The film and character has often been branded as a knockoff of Godzilla. Godzilla has been considered a filmographic metaphor for the United States, as well as an allegory of nuclear weapons in general. The earlier Godzilla films, especially the original, portrayed Godzilla as a frightening, nuclear monster. Godzilla represented the fears that many Japanese held about the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and the possibility of recurrence. As the series progressed, so did Godzilla, changing into a less destructive and more heroic character as the films became geared more towards children. Since then, the character has fallen somewhere in the middle sometimes portrayed as a protector of the world from external threats and other times as a bringer of destruction. In 1996, Godzilla received the MTV Lifetime Achievement Award, as well, Godzilla was given a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2004 to celebrate the premiere of the character's 50th anniversary film. Godzilla's pop cultural impact has led to the creation of numerous parodies and tributes, as seen in media such as Bambi Meets Godzilla which was ranked as one of the 50 greatest cartoons, various episodes of Mystery Science Theater 3000, and the song Godzilla by Blue Oyster Cult.
Godzilla has also been used in advertisements, such as in a commercial for Nike, where Godzilla lost a game off basketball to NBA player Charles Barkley. The commercial was subsequently adapted into a comic book illustrated by Jeff Butler. Godzilla has also appeared in a commercial for Snickers candy bars, which served as an indirect promo for the 2014 movie. Godzilla's success inspired the creation of numerous other monster characters, such as Gamera, Reptilicus of Denmark, Yongari of South Korea, Pulgasari of North Korea, Gorgo of the United Kingdom, and the Cloverfield Monster of the United States. Godzilla's fame and saurian appearance has influenced the scientific community. Gotrosaurus is a dubious genus of coelophysid dinosaur, named by paleontologist and admitted Godzilla fan Kenneth Carpenter. Dacosaurus is an extinct marine crocodile of the Jurassic period, which researchers informally nicknamed Godzilla. Paleontologists have written tongue-in-cheek speculative articles about Godzilla's biology, with Ken Carpenter tentatively classifying it as a ceratosaur based on its skull shape four-fingered hands and dorsal scutes, and paleontologist Darren Naish expressing skepticism while commenting on Godzilla's unusual morphology. Godzilla's ubiquity in pop culture has led to the mistaken assumption that the character is in the public domain, resulting in litigation by Toho to protect their corporate asset from becoming a generic trademark. In April 2008, Subway depicted a giant monster in a commercial for their $5 foot-long sandwich promotion. Toho filed a lawsuit against Subway for using the character without permission, demanding $150,000 in compensation. In February 2011, Toho sued Honda for depicting a fire breathing monster in a commercial for the Honda Odyssey. The monster was never mentioned by name, being seen briefly on a video screen inside the minivan. The Sea Shepherd Conservation Society christened a vessel Gojira. Its purpose is to target and harass Japanese whalers in defense of whales in the Southern Ocean Whale Sanctuary. The Gojira was renamed in May 2011 due to legal pressure from Toho. Gojira is the name of a French death metal band, formerly known as Godzilla. Legal problems forced the band to change their name. In May 2015, Toho launched a lawsuit against Voltage Pictures over a planned picture starring Anne Hathaway. Promotional material released at the Cannes Film Festival used images of Godzilla. The main belt asteroid 101781 Gojira discovered by American astronomer Roy Tucker at the Goodrick Pickett Observatory in 1999, was named in honor of Japanese fantasy creature. The official naming citation was published by the Minor Planet Center on July 11, 2018. To encourage tourism in April 2015 the Central Shinjuku Ward of Tokyo named Godzilla an official cultural ambassador. During an unveiling of a giant Godzilla bust at Toho headquarters, Shinjuku Mayor Kenichi Yoshizumi stated Godzilla is a character that is the pride of Japan. The mayor extended a residency certificate to an actor in a rubber suit representing Godzilla, but as the suit's hands were not designed for grasping it was accepted on Godzilla's behalf by a Toho executive. Reporters noted that Shinjuku Ward has been flattened by Godzilla in three Toho movies. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.